hello guys welcome to my channel thank you so much for subscribing if you've done if you haven't done that already please remember to subscribe to our channel on today's video i'll be teaching you guys how to make a pants trouser with a perfect crotch if you've been having issues with your crotches maybe you end up maybe making a pant trouser and you have squeezes on the front of the trouser maybe there's just a little detail that you're not doing correctly this video will show you everything that you need to do the sewing from the cutting from scratch to the sewing So first of all, I ruled out my starting line and here is the measurement I'll be using waist 31, hip 44, length 45, knee 22. So I'll take my crotch depth first. The crotch depth I'm using is 11. How did I get 11? You divide your hip measurement by 4. The hip I'm using is 44. So 44 divided by 4, we have 11. That's why I took 11 as you see me running out. After that, I'll take my hip line. The hip line is just to go up from your crotch depth by two inches. This line, you go up by two inches. That's how you get your hip line if you, if you don't know already. So this is me going up by two inches to mark out where I'll be taking my hip measurement. So after running it out, I would label this is the waistline, the hip line, and the crotch line. After labeling, I will rule out my starting line from this other side. This is where I'll, all my measurements will start from, from this line. I didn't want to use the paper because the paper line is not very straight, so I had to rule out a new line. So the next thing we are doing now is to take our hip measurements. Our hip is 44, 44 divided by 4, we have 11. So this is me marking out 11. After that, take the same 11 on your crotch line. Take the same hip measurement on your crotch line and rule a straight line straight up to your waist. We are not taking waist measurements yet. So make a straight line up to your waist from that 11 you took on your crotch depth and on your hip line. So after doing that, we will now go to our knee length. I'm using knee 22. So if you forgot to take your knee measure, your customer's knee measurement, you place your tape on your crotch depth down to your ankle line. Remember, even if the trouser is a full length trouser, you stop at your ankle line and divide whatever you get from there, divide it by two, just fold your tape into two mark the spot where that place stopped then go up by one and a half you get your knee length so my full length of this pants is 45 remember then to get your ankle length ankle is two inches upwards from your full length which automatically means my ankle length is 43 inches so from that 43 inches that's where you will go to your crotch depth and divide what you have by two to get your knee length that's if you forgot to measure your customer's knee length this is standard so this is me taking my full length i'm so sorry i did not realize my camera did not get that down part so just take your full length after taking your knee measurement your full length go up by two to get your ankle this is me marking out the ankle first then the next thing i ruled out was my full length then I didn't stop on the full length. I have another line under two inches for my folding. 
remember you will fold in the hem of your pant trouser to give it a neat look so i have three lines under there the first one is the ankle length um I'm writing it down not to be, get confused the next one is the full length of my trouser and the last line is my folding the folding allowance and this is the knee length So having done that, the next thing we'll do is to fix our crotch, which is the important part of this trouser. Take two inches from that line where we marked our 11 on the crotch depth, take two inches out. Then on the hip line, take 0.5, 0 .5, just mark 0 0.5, that's the part where you use your curve rule or your French curve or whatever you call it to mark out that crotch as you see me doing you took i took two inches on my crotch depth and 0 0.5 on the hip line to get that curve so this other side where we have the curve is our center front while this straight side is the side front if it was skirt we were making that side would have been the side front why the beginning will be the center from but this is trouser so you take your waist measurement from that curved part which is our trouser center front and our waist is 31 31 divided by 4 that's what we'll be using here we have 7.75 so 7.75 you take your tape and measure 7.75 from your center front remember that place is your center front. Then you add one inch for sewing allowance and another one inch for zipper allowance and pocket, zipper and pocket, because this uh, pant trouser will have a pocket as you can see. So I marked 9.75. My waist is 7.75 i added two inches extra for zipper pocket and sewing so from that where you marked the 9.75 mark a slant line down to the hip line slant line as i just did now we are taking our dart measurement that is four inches in four inches in from the center front four inches in then four inches down for the front while back is four inches in from the center front and five in inches downwards so th that is a one inch dart but you divide the one inch by two that's for where you mark your four inches go to your left by zero by half an inch go to your right by half an inch like i just did so we have one inch there so take your ruler Mark down the center one, which is the where the four inch inches stops. Take it straight down to the four inches you took for the front, and then mark the slant to the both sides where you did your half inch each. Do you get? As I'm doing now, just do it like that: half inch this way, half inch the other way, and the middle is the straight line. That's for our darts for the front. So the next thing we'll be doing to get a perfect slant of our pant trouser, you go up on the side front by half an inch on the side front. Then you come down on the center front by half an inch. Then take a ruler and slant it. That gives your waistline a perfect fitting after sewing the trouser. You see the difference from this and the other method you've been using. Go down on the side by half an inch go up on the cent go down on the center by half go up on the side by half now we are going to our crotch depths here we are trying to get our crease line by dividing what we have on our crotch depth by two crease line is the center the middle of your trouser so we divide what we have there by two and mark it measure it this way to know what you have here i have six and a half 
so i'll go to my knee line and mark six and a half that's what i got from here mark it on your knee line on your ankle line on your full length right mark it and draw a straight line if you're making a wide leg pant trouser you won't put this six and a half on the width on the down of your trouser because the wideness will be different downwards right so i took six and a half that i got in the middle of this crotch i took it on my knee but i wouldn't take it down down because this trouser is not a straight fitted trouser remember this six and a half that i got here for this crease line i'll take it on the other side too to get where our crotch line will be going to see as you can see me marking there I'll mark it down to know the middle from the middle that's where you take that measurement now we are extending our crease line downwards that crease line that will go six and a half right I measured what I have here and I went down and added just one inch because the down if you notice my tape is showing you seven seven and a half sorry so I'll take it down because if I measure six and a half that I have on the knee length, the trouser will be straight. So this is a bit, a little bit wide on the under. So I'm extending the crease line. So I have to um, indicate it so you know what I'm talking about. That is our crease line. Having done that, we are now going to, to measure our knee circumference. That knee length that I wrote 22 is from my waist to my knee now this is my knee circumference we're going to divide it by two right then my knee circumference is 20 divided by two we have 10 so i will take five on this side and five on the other side yeah but we have we have to add half an inch sewing one inch sewing allowance which is half an inch on this side half an inch on the other side as you see me marking five and a half on my left five and a half on my right so to make the knee a little bit tighter than the down of the trouser so this place i marked 5.5 that's where we'll now be going to the crotch so the down part i took the, how wide i want my pants to be yeah that's what i marked under there which is our width the width of our trouser as you see me using now is 25 divided by 2 right you mark it out so in your case you can use your measurements whatever measurements you're comfortable with if you want it to be a boot cut like a very wide one or a little bit wide one do your width measurements and use that so i'm extending that crease line to the because i stopped at the ankle point i'm extending it down to the folding line so i'll understand what i'm doing having done that we are now going to go ahead and make a straight rule of all these points that we marked out so from the knee line make a rule out a line to your hip remember we came in by five five point five on the knee that's the line i'm ruling out now five point five from the knee you trace it down to the crotch part see our trouser is taking form already so from that full length you trace it back down to the knee point as you can see me doing and wow we are done with the front of the trouser basically that's all for the front so now we'll just cut out our line our front trouser just follow the line but i won't cut out this slanted front yet because i'll need it for the back right so i will cut through the straight line when i'm done cutting the back i'll now remove that ss from that slanted front part So this is the part i'm talking about i will not cut it yet because i'll need it to get a trace out the back pattern first then i'll remove it later
Now that we're done cutting the front, we'll place it on another paper and trace it out. And while doing that, leave space on the upper part, leave a up to three inches space on the upper part and on both sides because we're extending these lines. The back is bigger than the front. So leave space on the upper part and on the two sides because these lines will be tracing them out. After tracing everything out, this is what we have. This is our front. I've repeated what I have on that front. As you can see, I didn't do that slant yet, right? I'll do it now because I couldn't slant it when the front paper was still on top of it. So this is me extending out our lines to do our back pattern. So now I have to place the front to take the measurement and know where the slant of the front is. We won't be needing this for the back. We just want to know where to take our own back slant from, as you can see me doing. So for the back, I'll introduce a red marker so that you know the difference between the back and front. That's the front that we used, the black marker. The red marker, I'll use it for the back so that when I'm tracing it out, I'll know where to cut. For this back, we are starting from our crotch extension. So I'll be using a red marker for this one so we'll understand the different line. On this straight line, you come in by one inch on the crotch line. The straight line that is going to the waist from the crotch on the crotch line you come in by one and on the waistline you come in by two inches and on that same waistline you go up by two inches to make the back higher than the, the back is usually higher than the front you go up by two inches on that waistline you come in by two inches and on the crotch line you take one inch so from that two inches you make a slant in to the crotch depth remember how we slanted our front this is the slant we are using for the back so whatever measurement we are doing from the waist will start from this red line so this is our back now the red line is our back so from there we would now take our waist measurements measure what you have what you have from this front slant to the end of that line after the red one here yeah? what you have there you will now start from that red line and bring it out i had 10 that's why i came out by 10. i don't know if you understand me watch it very well to understand i measured what i had from this slant to the blue line and i took it from this red line outside then i went up by half an inch you know, the other side, we have gone up by two inches. So here we are going up by half an inch and we will slant it down. Which will be our new waistline for the back piece. So having done that, we will now come to the hip line. This red line is where we are taking our hip measurement from. That is our back line, right? Our hip is 44 and we'll divide it by 4, which is 11. So on from the red line, measure 11 as you see me doing. Then trace it up to the waist line. And on the crotch depth, measure 11 too. 11. Do not put allowance. This was a mistake I did here. I still corrected myself. So having done that, we will now go to the crotch points. Remember for the front, we used, we divided our hip measurements by 
20 by 20 yeah now we'll divide by 10 which will give us 4.4 that 4.4 is what you will come in with come in from the red point come in, in sorry go out by 4.4 we went out by 2.2 in the front this back will now go out by 4.4 but on the hip line we are still maintaining 0 0.5 we used 0 0.5 for the back for the front we use it for the back so but the difference is the crotch depth where we did our French curve in front, we used 2.2. This back, we are using 4.4. How did we get 4.4? Your hip measurements divided by 20 for the front. Then for the back, your hip measurements divided by 10. That's how you get that crotch. So after that, after doing the crotch, we will now go for our back darts. Remember, this back, this that you're seeing here is for the front, right? So, the back that, the same way we did the front, coming from the crotch, from the center front by four, mark your four, as I'm marking now, go down by five, five. I used four for front and five for back. Make a straight line down to the five inches. Mm -hmm. Then that is a one inch that. So, on that straight line, go to your left by half an inch go to your right by half an inch which will make one inch So now that we're done with our back dart, we'll go to the knee point and do our half an inch extension. On the knee line, come out by half an inch on both sides, on the left side and on the right side as you see me doing. Then that line is going up to meet the hip and crotch line, the crotch line rather, sorry. That same, on that same line, come out by half an inch till the down like the full length half an inch half an inch nothing much you now trace it to trace everything together to get your back pants and after doing that you're done with the back the next thing is to cut it out when you're cutting cut the red line that is the back the back the black marker is for the front don't be confused our back trouser is ready we are done with the crotch the waist, everything, so you cut out. So our trouser is ready, back and front is ready. Very simple. Thank you for watching to this point. If you haven't subscribed, kindly subscribe. Now we'll cut out this slant I made in front that I told you earlier. See why I didn't cut it before? I need it for the back. So now I'm cutting it off and then boom, we are done. <laughs> the next thing we'll cut after this is our pockets because this pants trouser, I'm going to be putting a pocket. This is the front and that is the back of our trouser thank you for watching to this point please if you're new kindly subscribe if you haven't done that already so this is our pocket this is just a basic pocket nothing serious pocket is usually 12 inches downwards so that you don't get pocket as long as your knee length <laughs> so pocket is basically down um, 12 inches downwards and seven inches in see me measuring that's um the pants 
right? You don't want your, your pocket to pass your, your darts. So I got six here. I'm adding one, making seven for the sewing. So I won't did yeah, seven. Then 12 inches downwards for the length. 12 inches for the length yeah we, we we are using 12 you don't want your your pocket to be longer than your your too much longer than your hip line if you put your hand in your pocket you don't want it to start reaching your knee as you can see our uh, here we have 12 so um, we have 11 and a half i'm even using 12 because we'll sew yeah we'll stitch so i'm making the straight line to stop at the 12 inches and then you introduce your french curve just make a curve pocket is not that difficult make a curve from your 12 inches to the seven where you took your seven that's basically all for pocket and cut it on fold remember So now we're done with the pocket. The next thing is to get our our waistband. This trouser was cut in full. This is how you cut a pant trouser. For instance, you want to for the like in case you want to make a jumpsuit. For jumpsuits, you don't need to remove this band because this is where your waistline is starting from, right? So, but for this trouser, we will need a band. So we are coming down with by two inches as you can see me doing the, the the two inches is not straight waist trouser waistband is not straight so it's always slanty remember this paper these two inches here i'm going to take it off use it to cut another two inches as slant as the way is slanty like this to get my waistband so now I'll fold it in before i will cut my fabric Right, I'm about to cut my fabric. I don't want to cut it in full so that the trouser will not, when I now add band, it will not be under my bust. So to maintain this waistline, fold, remove two inches, fold it in. Then as you see me securing with pin so that it doesn't start dangling up and down. So I'll cut out. The same thing goes for the back. After cutting the front, you cut out the back the same way same way don't be like me i forgot for the back piece i forgot and i cut it straight i didn't fold until i realized myself i had to fold in the two inches and cut it out So now the next thing is to cut out our pocket, just place it and cut it out. Then the this is the band, remember I told you, I'm, I'm measuring what I have here. I have 10, which means I'm going to cut 40 because trouser is four pieces here. Yeah? So I cut out, I measure two inches, I measure three because I'm going to sew. So I cut it out for our band and that's all for the trouser. I am very very grateful to you guys for watching it to this point please remember to like comment let us know what you would want us to do on our next video and thank you so much for watching to this point so we are going to the sewing machine to sew and that will be on another video i don't want it to be too long thank you so much guys